Section 21.7, uh, nuclear energy fusion, and 21.8, nuclear energy fission. This happens to be your very last of your sections that you're going to do in the book this year. Congratulations. So today is the nuclear bomb chapter and nuclear power chapter. Before I get into that, I, can, I have to kind of tell you that you can use a neutron as a bullet to break apart, or almost like a bowling ball that crashes into the bowling pins and kind of sends them flying. But if you were to have a very large, unstable radioactive element, such as, in this case, uranium-235, and you bombard it with something. Now, it's usually either, either an alpha wave, which is a helium uh, nucleus, or in this case, a, a neutron. It can break that up into various things. So. Um, if, if it were to like shatter this into two places, you're going to have two things that it's broken apart into. It's going to break apart into a either, let's say one or the other, either a tellurium 52 and a, zi a zirconium 40. Okay, so if you add those two atomic numbers, you're going to get 92. Okay, or you're going to break apart into a barium-142 or a krypton-36, which also would equal that 92. So there's a couple different possibilities you could take, but if it does, it's going to break it apart into smaller um, atoms, okay, smaller elements, and neutrons, okay? Now, here's the, here's the, the thing that happens. Since you bombarded a, an atom with a neutron, and the result is that it breaks it apart, and one of the, the, the constituents that it's broken apart into are more neutrons that are sent out at high energy into a, the same piece of uranium. Okay, This is just one atom that the neutron hit, but I would imagine there's lots of uranium atoms in that sample. Well, when it splits apart and you get neutrons as a result, those neutrons then can slam into other uranium, which can then split them up, and then more your more neutrons are made, and then those neutrons slam into other uranium. Okay, can you see the, the idea? You're eventually going to get what's called a chain reaction. All right, so I'll write that down. A chain reaction where it's kind of unstoppable where one thing then makes the next thing happen, propagates the next thing happen, makes the next thing happen, and eventually it's a, you can't go backwards, okay? Now, you have to have a certain amount of the uranium to do this. Um, it's called a critical mass. You have to have a certain amount, but if you have that certain amount, the neutrons then slam into more and more and more, and eventually the neutrons stay in the sample and then all the neutrons are essentially converted into slamming in and breaking apart the uranium down into a thing. Now, at the same time, lots and lots of energy is released. Huge amounts of energy is released. Um, well, that's called a nuclear bomb. And yes, there's lots of energy. So here's this chain reaction. The neutron in breaks apart the nuclear, uh, uh, and this is called fission. So um, fission is when it splits. So it's splitting the atom. Well, um, more neutrons are then produced from each of these, which then in turn uh, splits more atoms, and eventually you get a situation where all of the sample of the radioactive uh, element is broken into smaller things with energy being released. So all of that energy is, is a detonation. That's what's happening. So if you don't have a critical mass... Okay, if there's not enough. So, so here's on this uh, left side is a subcritical mass. If you don't have enough atoms present, then the neutrons are simply going to leave the sample. And, and you're not going to have enough to actually have a detonation. But if you have a, a, a certain amount, okay, a certain amount, then the neutrons that are emitted from each broken apart uh, reaction then are used to detonate or to break apart other ones, okay? That is called, that would be a critical mass. It's the smallest amount necessary that uses up all of the neutrons involved. A supercritical mass 
is one in which you have more than enough uh, of the radio element present and you have enough neutrons in order to essentially uh, break apart the entire sample. The entire sample goes faster and faster and faster. It's an accelerating uh, reaction. So this can happen in just, you know, depending upon what it is, just a few milliseconds and you can end up with every single atom broken apart with the resultant energy that comes, a, uh, comes out from it. Now, if you're very, very careful, you can use these nuclear reactions very controlled to use the energy that's produced to heat water or gas. A lot of times it's, it's other gases like helium or something, but it's going to heat some kind of a gas and that heated gas is going to turn a turbine and the turbine, this is a turbine, that's going to go around and around and around and around and then that turbine is going to be connected to a generator that's going to generate electricity. Okay, A generator usually just has some kind of a spinning magnet and that magnetic field fluctuates and that's what electricity is. It's alternating current of electricity where it's a north north and then south and then north and south in a millisecond as that that generator is spinning and you can use the steam to create electricity just like a coal power plant plant boils water and the water turns into steam the steam turns the turbine you're going to get the same thing here only you're using a very controlled nuclear reaction to do it You control the uh, fuel rods, which is the nuclear material, with control rods, which essentially dampen it. Don't let certain neutrons in. Remember, the neutrons are required to break apart these things. And so if you do not have, if you don't have, if some, some of this material is blocked, then the neutron doesn't strike it, and then you don't get a energy released from the from that you know you're using neutrons really as bullets so if you block them with these control rods then uh, it keeps it from reaching a supercritical mass and the whole thing exploding you don't want your neighborhood um, power plant to you know completely annihilate all living things on earth it was it's a bad design this is 2000 uh, this is section 21.8 on fusion now remember fission Okay, fission is not fission, but fission, um, I-O-N, is when you split the atom. Okay, so it's splitting. Fusion is the opposite. You're fusing it. You're shoving it together and turning it into a bigger element. So, for instance, two hydrogens, okay, two hydrogens uh, shoved together would make, you know, H2 would turn into H-E. Okay, so hydrogen turns into helium. So that's what happens in stars. Stars work that way. You have such gravity and such heat uh, inside of the core of stars that hydrogen gas is being shoved together on itself with such pressure that it actually overcomes the repulsion of the positives to the positives. Remember, the protons oppose each other, and it shoves them together and actually turns it into a new nucleus, which would be helium, and at, as a result, just like splitting the atom, you get huge energy coming out. Fusing atoms, you're getting a get huge energy coming out as well. So nuclear fusion would be a great thing because when you shove hydrogen together to make helium, that helium is, no, is not radioactive. It's just helium gas. It's no big deal. And we've got lots and lots and lots and lots of very small atoms we have very few very big atoms. Most of it's on the in the core of the Earth. So very little on the crust of the Earth, but we have tons of the little stuff. If we could use little stuff and shove it together and make, atom, make energy, we would have energy forever. We would have tons and tons and tons of it. It would be in the air. It would be in the water. It would be in the rocks. It would be in the trees. Everything you could use it as fuel. Okay. Uh, problem is you have to get it as hot as the core of a sun in order to fuse these two together because protons don't like protons and they oppose protons and you, you don't want to sh you can't shove them together very well. So the problem that we have right now is that would be a great power except that every building that we build to make it 
melts because it would melt all matter and we can't we can't don't have anything to make the building out of or the box out of in order to do it okay that's the problem it needs to be several million kelvin in order to to fuse these elements and they really yeah, nobody's came up with anything that doesn't melt at that temperature so last slide of the last section uh, this is a tom um, a tomamac um, a tokamak apparatus which is a design for something where it's using uh, magnetic coils or magnetic fields to heat the material inside something that's not going to then melt the box that's containing it so it's the best kind of hope uh, for the future of uh, somebody smart enough to actually make this thing without dissolving the planet so hope that doesn't happen to you but um I really appreciate you studying hard and working hard, and I'm very proud of you. Congratulations for all your work.